The soldier killed in a helicopter crash in eastern Afghanistan over the weekend has been identified as 36-year-old Chief Warrant Officer Jacob Sims of Oklahoma. He's the 12th U.S. service member to die in Afghanistan this year and brings the number of American military personnel killed since the war began 16 years ago to 2,400. Foreign Relations Committee will come to order. and I want Late this afternoon, Defense Secretary James Mattis and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson went to Capitol Hill to ask for an extension of the AUMF, the Authorization for Use of Military Force. That's the law that allows the U.S. to continue its wars against those responsible for the 9-11 attacks. As the Afghanistan war heads into its 17th year, the Trump administration has already announced that 4,000 more U.S. troops will deploy to Afghanistan this fall. There we go. Vice News joined the 3rd Infantry Division of Fort Stewart, Georgia, as they prepared for a nine-month deployment. I said, Skip, watch the puddle. So we'll be heading off to Afghanistan in actually about close to 48 hours. All right, hey, where are you going to get started? Hey, bring it in. The day after tomorrow starts our legacy, right? Our contribution. Don't go out tonight and tie one on that you're going to regret. Invest in what's important, right? Invest in your family. It's bittersweet. I'll be leaving my family behind, uh, but I know they'll be in good spirits. I actually thought that I would be deploying a lot sooner in my military career. We've been in Afghanistan for many, many years now. And so now we have a new generation of troops and service members that have to really have some tough decisions and they're getting younger and younger. So I'm one of the first in the family to, uh, to join the Army. I'm one of the first to uh, graduate from college. You've got to pack it right, you've got to pack it tight. This is a uh, full body armor right here. It's got plates on the side and back and on the sides and I've got some more that I've got to add on. Uh, my wife makes me pack extra socks just to, if I want to double up on the socks and extra towels, extra everything. We've been married for about three and a half years now, so still relatively young. It's kind of tough on her, you know, kind of tough on her. This is literally packing up and not coming back for months at a time, or you never know, maybe not coming back alive, you know? That's reality, right? We've got we've got a plan for that. If it happens or if something bad happens, it's all in this packet, you know, but I asked him and he said it's up to me. And if in the event that happens, I would want him to go wherever I go. So, you know, I try not to think about it a lot because I know that he'll be back. So. I want to make it easy as possible for my family if something happen. They've already got to deal with a significant emotional event if something were to truly happen to me. I think it's good to just think through it, talk through it, have that tough discussion. If anything ever happens to me, take care of our seeds. I love you. So. I think one good thing is they joined it knowing that Afghanistan was going on. Unlike me joining the Army 20 years ago, we joined in a period of peace, and it was it was we were always prepared for something, but it was a period of peace. All of these soldiers know we're in Iraq, they know we're in Afghanistan, they still have the courage to join. We're gonna do whatever mission the Army gives us. All the political fray and all that stuff, as a soldier, we just have a oath to obey the orders of the President of the United States, and, and that's where we go, so. So during 9-11, I was in junior high, and they took us all together into uh, just a few classrooms, and we all watched those towers go down. So when you think about it, it's, it's just a chilling moment, you know, many, many years later to still be combating things like this. You know? So there's approximately 468, I believe, trees here. And they're all with respect to all the soldiers that lost their lives in Afghanistan and in Iraq. I've got a few on my team that are 19, 20 years old. Fairly young. So it's, it's really it's gonna put a lot of pressure on me to make sure they get back to their families. At the same time as you know, me looking out for
So I'll wake up tomorrow, sit down and have breakfast with my wife, and just kind of be under each other. Talk about the good times, not talk about how sad we're going to be to be away from each other. Really talk about some good times, review some old videos, maybe from our wedding, maybe from when we first got together, and really reminisce about some of the good times so we leave on a really good note. And then we'll show up, drop our bags, pick up our weapons, have a ceremony, get on buses, and head down to the ADAG and fly out. I want to tell you that I love you. <laughs> love you so much. I love you too. I won't have anybody to put my cold feet on. <laughs> What am I gonna do? <laughs> You're gonna have to get a pillow for your feet. But the pillow is warm. You know, put some socks on. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. The soldiers in front of you uh, represent some of the best logisticians in the Army. Uh, we are ready to assume this mission. Brigade, attention, boom! I know we'll do well. We're gonna bring back our folks alive. See y'all in nine months. <laughs>